a June something or other in uh, 2013, I believe. Wait, it's coming to me. James is saying. Can you hear me? Yes. But I. Okay, sorry, guys. Uh, there's some disruption over here, and uh, my internet is gone. Uh, so, should we start? I, I, I'm calling through a PSTN line. Okay, well, I guess that'll have to do. Uh, at any rate, okay. let me introduce. I just wanted to mention, and I'm on video, so you're not going to see any of this, but I wanted to mention that there is. Uh, a code for Astrakhan, for those of you who are listening, I'll read it. It's AC13VUC, AC13VUC. You can get 20% um, off of Astrakhan. And David Duffett and the guys over there, and James is nodding, knowing that this is a good deal. 20%, hey, where are you going to get 20% off, right? We've got an unusual crowd with us, too. Mr. Ed Guy is with us. I wish I could play the uh, 20th Century Fox theme, but it's copyrighted and uh, all of that, so I can't. We have a huge component of True Phone here, in fact. Dan Lane, James Bodie, Ed, um, and who did I forget? Andy Smith. Andy Smith, who's actually not here. TJ is with us from Belgium, so we're, uh, you, you, we are somewhat international. Our good friend, and I'm looking, Amit is coming in, who is our guest. Uh, Tim Patton's here. Amit is going to try to join, I guess, and he's got some slides, which I have, but it's going to be really hard to coordinate. And we are here to talk about USSD. Hello, Emmett, you're back. Let's see if you have any... Sorry, audio. guys. There okay. is there's some horrible disruption in the Internet. And you know what? I've been cut off four times today myself with my DSL line. Just the uh, router's been rebooting and so on. Amit, you, you're here from Telestax, and we're going to be right. talking about USSD. And let's uh, get started with a definition. It's actually a very low-level protocol that talks to GSM phones. Would that be close to the zoom out view of it? Right. OK. Uh, so USSD is a uh, yeah. decade-old protocol. Um, it's used. Uh, in GSM network uh, since the time when, when the GSM was born. Uh, USSD stands for Unstructured Supplementary Service Data. Uh, it's pretty common uh, to use USSD in... What do you say? At least for me. Is the line clear? Yeah, we've got echo. Come yeah. Uh-oh. OK. I'm trying to deal with that now. Is this any better now? Okay, let's see. Hello. I hear you. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead, Amit. Okay. You're, you're, you're good now. Okay, sorry okay. about that. That Actually, that may have been you, Amit. I'm not sure. Okay. So let me start again. Um, USSD right. stands for un Unstructured Supplementary Service Data. Uh, as Randy mentioned, it's a pretty low-level protocol, and uh, it's, it's uh, in existence right from the time when GSM was born. Uh, it's decade old, or not even decade, it's like half a century old technology uh, which is still alive. It's pretty common to use uh, USSD in um, Asia, African market, uh, but I haven't seen uh, most much of the use in, in Western countries. Uh, absolutely zero usage in US and probably some usage in, in Europe. But um, if I talk to some, some uh, guy in US, uh, they get pretty confused. What exactly is USSD? Uh, so let me start uh, with the presentation. Uh, I have created a small presentation where, where I have given uh, some idea about uh, what is USSD and how um, even in today's world, USSD uh, is very important uh, for the GSM as well as the smartphones or, or new, new world application. Uh, so let me share my screen. Well, while you're uh, getting that ready, uh, Emmett, I just wanted to mention that I used to have a prepaid phone in France, and mm -hmm. one of the ways that you enter, in fact, I thought I had a gift of this, but one of the ways that you enter into a discussion, uh, dis a dialogue with the server is USSD, I'm sure, which is you have a menu, and no matter how dumb your phone is, you can answer it. It's kind of like SMSing back and forth, but it is more instantaneous. And so these are these codes like 
um, pound, one, two, three pound, which gives you your status of uh, minutes that you got left and so on, and also the, uh, the menu which you can then order internet and so on. So while I was talking, I was hoping you were going to go to your screen share. That's uh, sure. But uh, whenever you're ready. Actually, you, you, you are just doing my work, Randy. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, well, I figured we would be talking a little bit more about what you guys do with your gateway as well. Sure. Okay, so... Why is it not showing my screen anymore? Mm. Do you guys see my slides? So just need to maximize it. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so the first slide talks about agenda. We, we're going to talk about what is USSD, very basic, and then uh, what kind of applications we can develop, and then a little bit about Telscale USSD gateway, and a bit about architecture. So Perfect. let's start. Uh, just before I start, please feel free to interrupt me and ask questions if you have any. Uh, let's make it uh, both ways. Uh, not that only I keep talking and, and you guys get, get bored. Okay. So what is USSD? So uh, USSD is a protocol used by the GSM cellular telephone. Uh, as we mentioned a few minutes back that it's uh, in existence uh, from last 50 years, the time when GSM was born. It was uh, started uh, by the ITUT group. Uh, Initially, USSD uh, version 1 was used, uh, which is uh, only the uh, end user can dial USSD code and, and connect to the application. Um, USSD is, is pretty much uh, instant messaging text. Um, it can be simple English or it can be UCS2 encoded. So any, any like other language can be used in, in um, USSD communication. The difference between the USSD and SMS is SMS is asynchronous. Uh, there is no guarantee that the SMS, if sent by PLA, will be reached to the party B immediately um, because there is, there is a store and forward mechanism in between. So SMS goes to the operator. It, it stays at the operator side for some time. And uh, depending upon the business logic, it's sent to party B. Unlike SMS, USSD is real time. So if uh, the USSD is initiated by application, it has to reach the end user uh, in, in milliseconds. And uh, the application can expect back some response from the end user. And um, everything is happening in a dialogue. So there is always a dialogue-based uh, communication between the uh, application and uh, end user. As the diagram shows, um, if the user is initiating USSD, it always uh, ends with hash. Uh, most of the time, maybe it's right to say 99% of the time, USSD begins with asterisks. Uh, you can have as many asterisks as you want in between, like star, one, two, three, star, blah, 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 hash, which goes to the ne operator network, comes to the HLR. HLR is uh, the network node where the profile of the user uh, remains and all of the properties of, of this particular uh, MSISDN or the user resides. And the HLR forwards that to the USSD gateway. In, in, in this case, I've shown it as scale USSD gateway, which exposes uh, this request of the user via IP, uh, basically HTTP, to the third party application, and application can send back the response. Everything happens uh, in, in, in one dialogue. OK, uh, let's move to the slide four. So as Randy was mentioning that all phones 100% uh, are capable of USSD, irrespective of whether you have the first generation um, Nokia phones, uh, black and white, which is just capable of sending SMS or uh, uh, capable of doing a voice call. It's still capable of USSD. And uh, as we mentioned, it's real time instant messaging service uh, because there is no store and forward like SMS. Um, USSD operation, there are two kinds. One is pull and the other is push. 
pull is basically when the end user dials the USSD code and it reaches to the application. Application sends back the response. Push uh, was introduced later in the version 2 of USSD. Um, basically, it's MAP, Mobile Application Protocol, uh, which is the underlying protocol for USSD. Part of, it's a part of GSM uh, protocol stack. Uh, so basically, uh, push is more like uh, application initiates the USSD session for end user. Um, guys, I'm getting some pings, and uh, as of now, I, I'm not having multiple screens, so I'm not able to see the ping. So if you have any questions, just stop me, and, and uh, you can ask me. Okay. Uh I actually do have a question. You have, first of all, you have a little bit of a cable noise of some kind, Emmett. You might either try uh -oh. <laughs> try to stay really still or figure that out. But um, actually, what might be interesting is to run through the sequence that I kind of just was about to describe before, which is if um, I type in. Star, I call, I type in star, I'm uh, sorry, pound one, two, three, pound. So that's USSD. It's going to, how is that even received? How, do, how does that part work physically? So if somebody, something gets that and it sends back a response, which is in this case an answer saying you have so many minutes left and you have, you're going to expire and so on. And then it also sends back a menu saying respond with a one if you want this menu and two and so on. So the steps are, I type, I pseudo dial something. How does that even, how is that even detected? Can you explain that part? Okay. Uh, sure, Randy, I think you're moving much faster. I have that in a, a later part of the slide. Okay, well, we, we can wait. I was just really curious about that one thing. <laughs> oh, no, sure, sure. Right. Uh, so maybe if we can wait for a few, uh, few more slides, and I'll explain that uh, later. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, so let's move to what kind of applications can we develop. Uh, mobile money, this is multi-million dollar market, uh, or even I can say it's already a billion dollar market. We do know about the mobile money. Um, it helps you to exchange uh, or pay your bills, pay your utility bills, uh, even, even transfer money between the banks and, and uh, your buddies. Uh, mobile money is very big. Uh, Vertical now in um, African region where the reach of the bank is very limited. Uh, I've personally experienced uh, this market in, in uh, most of the countries in Africa, especially on uh, the mobile uh, to transfer the money. Ahmed, I'm really sorry to interrupt, but every once in a while this noise gets so bad that um, it's, it's really you're not understandable. Can you check on your cable connection? Yeah, it's like you've got a, a crunchy, uh, a yeah. bad connection on your on your headset or microphone. We're getting horrible, horrible noise on it. Okay. Uh, and it stopped for a second. Is this any better for you guys? Yeah, there's no crunch, but <laughs> yeah, I guess you're using the internal microphone on your PC now. Yes, I'm. Uh, I just. Uh, Plugged off my headphones uh, microphone, just trying to see if it's uh, headphones. That'll actually work, I guess. It's the fidelity is a little less good, but if the noise is gone, I think we can live with it, right? Okay. What do you think, so, James? Yeah, that, that's got rid of the crunch. So uh, yeah, let's go with oh, that. This happens. This is live. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, oh, guys. No. Uh, uh, this is the best headset I have. I mean, uh, I had a pretty good. Uh, uh, feedback about this headset, so I was expecting that it will be perfectly fine, but just one of the bad bad endings. Well, it was in the beginning, but anyway, um, okay, let's continue. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, uh, so uh, I was talking about the applications. I just spoke about the mobile money application. Um, it's uh, pretty hot in Africa and uh, uh, some parts of Asia. Um, basically, uh, uh, mobile money helps the end users to transfer the money um, using their handset uh, or pay the utility bills uh, using their handset. And the USSD, because of its uh, nature of being uh, real-time, synchronous, uh, 
fix the requirement of mobile money where uh, if you do the transfer if, if uh, something fails uh, everything in, all, all the transactions are rolled back uh, so nothing nothing is actually happening uh, and um, um, basically it's it's successful in Africa because uh, it's very the GSM reach is more than the uh, than the banking reach the bank banks are not uh, present in every part of, of uh, the country, but uh, the GSM network reach reaches in every nooks and corners of, of this uh, place. So, mobile money is, is a very big hit in, in Africa and uh, Asian countries. The next is instant messaging apps. Uh, this is quite interesting. The instant messaging apps. Uh, not many people know that uh, USSD uh, is absolutely free even in roaming. Um, so, if you are moving from one country to another country, uh, you dial the USSD short code and uh, it's absolutely free. You don't pay any any money for this. Uh, that's because uh, there is no well, there is no standard for uh, charging USSD. Uh, basically, uh, for charging in GSM network, they use uh, Camel Cap Camel application protocol, and it's still not uh, mature enough for USSD. And the other part is. Uh, USSD was intentionally kept free for uh, end users to check their uh, services, like uh, how much balance is remaining in my prepaid. Um, we recently received requests from quite a few uh, instant messaging app providers that they want to use our USSD. Uh, so if the guy is roaming, uh, he can still chat uh, using the instant messaging application downloaded on smartphone. But the underlying protocol will be USSD to transfer these IMs. So the, app, the, the user who's roaming in another country doesn't have to pay the fees. Uh, we all know that uh, data, data bundle costs a lot when you're roaming. So this is one of the really nice, interesting uh, usage of USSD. The next uh, one talks about uh, exposing the social media, uh, the Twitter and the Facebook via USSD. Uh, this is no, no rocket science. It's basically if your friend uh, tweets about uh, you or uh, if you are interested in, in somebody else's uh, comments on the Facebook, you just subscribe. And, and because of the USSD nature of uh, real time, uh, as soon as somebody uh, pings you or tweets you, uh, it immediately pushes back to your phone. And, and you can see it on, on your phone. Uh, Prepaid call callback. This is a very interesting application. Um, it's been deployed uh, in in one of the operators in India, especially for women. Uh, it says that uh, even when you have no charge, you can make the calls. Uh, how it works is uh, since the USSD is free, you dial uh, some short code, say star one two three hash, and the number of the end user that you want to talk talk to. Uh, this is assuming you don't have any. Uh, credit in your phone remaining, and the application will then dial uh, the, the the caller and the callee, and and mix the voice. So it's kind of conferencing, but we seem to be plagued with <laughs> plagued with problems today. Can you hear me, Emmett? Ahmed has disappeared. <laughs> he's well. He's there in the video. I think something. His audio just died somehow. While we're waiting. Well, we know I'm, what we uh, we can send Amit for his birthday, don't we? Send him a new microphone. A microphone. Yay, VoIP. <laughs> but but Ken, it's not VoIP. It's. Uh, uh, oh, Randy? You're back. You're back. We lost you for about a minute there, Ahmed. Yeah, I, I, again the ISP is gone. There's something really wrong uh, today. Uh, so I'm dialing from BSTN right now, uh, okay. and uh, I think I can continue on this. Is the voice clear? Okay. You're still. Oh no, you dropped on video. Okay. Yeah, you're a little bit narrow band, Amit, but we can right, uh, we me, can hear you. All right, let me just um... go ahead, Amit. I'll bring your level up a little bit. And I'll try to get those slides. Okay. I'm extremely sorry about this, guys. Uh, it's one of the bad days, really. Okay. okay. So, uh, 
uh, I was talking about uh, the applications of USSD and uh, the last I spoke about is uh, the prepaid uh, callback service uh, that you can develop using USSD. Uh, Randy, uh, even even my machine has crashed, so, so uh, uh, give me just a few seconds, let me bring it up and uh, I can continue. Okay. Meantime, I'm looking for this, <laughs> looking for the slides, and I don't know where they went. Cause I, oh, here we go. I've got those. <laughs> so, a uh, word from Simwood. No, I guess we can't do that. Um, content only. Single page, okay. And a nice little uh, sh screen share. Okay, I, I have the screen right now in front of me, so I can take over. Okay. Can you can you can you please share the screen with the rest of the team? So yeah, uh, I'm uh, I'm actually I'm there, the and I'm just looking at where we were. Yeah, we're all looking at the uh, slide headed history. First line. Is that isn't that where we Is were? That the one you want to be on? Applications, real-time billing, information to prepaid customers. I think we were there. The list goes on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, like that. Yeah, there are lots of things you can use USSD for. But it has to be said that uh, certain operators, uh, in response to the uh, very large amounts of USSD traffic that appear to be working on their uh, networks. Some operators have started limiting the amount of USSD that they allow, or the types of USSD traffic that they allow on their networks, um, thereby blocking some of the slightly more imaginative uses of USSD. Now, when you're roaming, if I uh, land in Amsterdam and I get a message that looks like an SM SMS saying that here's, here's the race while you're roaming. That's an SMS, right? That's an SMS, yeah. The, uh, the difference with a USSD uh, query is that it goes, um, normally goes um, either directly to the front of your screen if it's, if it's a push, so it's kind of presented like a, a flash SMS, or going the other way, it'll go normally to a, a USSD gateway, which will then be fed into something else, some other computer system downstream. And it really is just a text. I mean, it's just a bunch yeah, of text. Just, yeah, there there like is no other possibility, right? Message. The difference is that uh, because it doesn't go through the SMSC, it's, it's normally not tariffed, or it is not tariffed. But how does that work? You're talking, you're on a radio. I mean, these are questions I wanted to ask Amit anyway. The, you're on a radio in Amsterdam, so you're on somebody else's system. How do they manage... Well, it's on the it's on the signaling channel, Randy, and and of course the signaling channel has to be open to allow you to do your signaling. So you can't join a GSM system unless you've got access to the signaling channel. And normally, uh, the signaling channel is free. And that's what they don't like. Uh, well, they don't like it when people start kick, uh, taking advantage of it and overusing it too much. But for the occasional. Uh, USSD query here and there, um, they're kind of not that bothered. But it's when you start yeah. thousands and millions of them. There was it's actually like, someone uh, in the UK that's... who's... Sorry, Ed. Go ahead, Dan. <laughs> okay, thanks. Okay. Um, there was actually someone in the UK whose name I won't mention who set up a multi-user chat system based on USSD so that you could yeah. basically have groups of people all talking to each other for free using uh, just, just by tapping in USSD stuff. Yeah, that was a bit naughty of you, wasn't it, Dan? I didn't say it was me. I said I wouldn't mention that. <laughs> okay, we're going to try to get Amit. We're going to try to get Amit back in. Here he is. I see him. Oh. Hey guys. Okay. Ah, sorry, man. So uh, I'm still connected to PSN. I'll keep uh, my Hangouts mute. Uh, so in case if it uh, decides to die again, I I feel be connected and and I don't break. Okay. okay, we'll try to do that. Yeah, the only problem with you coming in via PSTN is that it, it doesn't detect your audio and flick to your video. Well, I can, I can do that. I should have done okay. it then and I didn't. But um, who's going to, you going to put the slides up, Amit? Yeah. Or do you want me to? They were actually really, really clear uh, when you did it, Randy. Yeah, I knew he was going to say that. Okay, let's see. 
problem is I have to fall. So he's got to, he, you have to direct me now, Emmett. I will put the slides up. You can see them. In fact, I'll put okay, myself in. Okay. Well, so, that's, the, that's the movie sense slide. Are, yeah. we, are we even on the right slide? Uh, he's gone. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I, it's application. Okay. Can you, can you go to applications, which is slide? There up, we go. Uh, you should be there now. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we just spoke about uh, prepared fallback, uh, and uh, the next application is based on location. Uh, this service uh, involves a little bit more than USSD, but um, uh, USSD forms a uh, uh, major part uh, in providing this kind of service. Uh, where, for example, you move into a shopping mall and there is some promotions going on. Uh, the, the, um, uh, the operators can have a tie up with uh, the merchants in the shopping mall and they can push the promotions to your phone. And if you are interested, you just walk through that uh, shop and, and buy, the, buy the items in the sale. Uh, this is a very interesting application, uh, which one of uh, uh, a startup in India uh, approached us to uh, help them up with, with this kind of application, and, and they are right now in uh, uh, testing phase, and probably they'll go live pretty soon. But uh, this this is really picking up a lot uh, and helping the. Um, different way of advertising and different way of attracting attracting the targeted audience. Uh, the next one is real time billing information. Uh, this is this is very sweet. Uh, it's for prepaid consumers or prepaid users. As soon as you make any call, um, uh, the ion net the ion platform, intelligent network platform, uh, notifies USSD that uh, the call is over, and the USSD gateway just pushes the information that you spoke for, say, two minutes, and the cost of the call was uh, two pounds, and uh, the remaining amount is uh, six pounds. This, this can be, this, this particular information is very useful for end users. Uh, it helps them to plan um, their, their, uh, their box time, and also the charge uh, helps them to go and, and get the phone charged at, at real time uh, I mean, um, when it's required before it expires. Uh, I was involved in uh, one of the studies um, with one of the operators where after uh, introducing this kind of uh, service, uh, where they, they proactively uh, informed the users about uh, the, uh, the amount remaining in their balance, the users went and recharged before uh, the credit got over. And, and they saw a really good uh, improvement in the behavior of at the end users. So this could be used in any of the service irrespective of whether it's a VOIP provider or an uh, operator who is giving the service on GSM. OK. OK. Uh, so next slide is Citrix. Randy, can you move yeah. to the next slide? We're there. We're there. There may be a delay, depending on what you're looking at. OK, OK. Now, yeah, now I can see uh, it took some time for this question. Right. So a um, little bit of history about uh, Telskill USSD. Uh, Telskill is enterprise version of uh, uh, Movisense. Uh, uh, so Movisense is the open source project which was started way back in uh, 2004 by uh, by Owen Ivanov, who is founder and also one of the uh, co-founders of Telistec. Uh, it was only James Lee uh, back then. Uh, we guys were pretty much focused on James Lee server and making sure that uh, we pass the certificates for uh, uh, James Lee JSR 1.0. And then 1.1. 1 .1. uh, they pretty soon realized that uh, though we guys are pretty much focused on telco market or telco domain, uh, mainly caters to the telco domain factor. The JNC server is uh, pretty tough in terms of learning curve. Uh, and then we realized that this is picking up uh, uh, with the IMS becoming hot in the telco market. 
We introduced Sipsolvet in 2007 with John, uh, who's uh, also one of the co-founders of Sanispec. Uh, but still, uh, we, we realized that operators and uh, many other uh, service providers, including the VOIP service providers, uh, are not 100% on, on IP side or on VOIP side, and they still have to have some kind of bridging between the between the next generation network and the legacy network, which is X7. That was the time when we decided, okay, uh, there is no other open source X7 which can which can be used as a as a bridge. And we, we decided uh, probably we need to have our own X7 spec, uh, which is 100% Java and uh, independent to any operating system or uh, any JVM. Um, so X7 spec was developed. Uh, but still, there was a gap where uh, telco developers are not as fast or as innovative as web developers. And um, at the time when we thought, okay, uh, it's high time and we need to have some turnkey like USLC, SMSC, which is used for uh, location-based services, and EIR, which is equipment uh, identity register. Key products and that the time when Cellscale USSD was born on top of uh, MobileSense USSD. So Cellscale USSD exposes the uh, HTTP API to the end user. Uh, so even the web developer who has no idea about SF7 or has no clue about Jamesly or has no clue what's happening in the Delco world can still develop a USSD application by writing a simple sublet and you are there, you can write uh, you can push the USSD, you can get the USSD request from the end user and develop the application. Okay, let's go to the next slide, which is uh, architecture. So, as you can see, uh, USSD is built on top of uh, the Telscale USSD is built on top of Telscale Game 3 server, which is one of the robust and most stable. Uh, open source Gene Free Server available as of now, and it also leverages our own SS7 framework, uh, Telscale JSS7 framework. The beauty of uh, Telscale JSS7 framework is uh, it can work for, uh, on top of Citron and 3 ua uh, which is MTP3 user part application layer, or it can also work with uh, legacy E1 link provided by the operator. Uh, so in case if uh, anybody wants to use Telscale USSD on top of legacy E1, uh, they use uh, any of this Telscale, uh, any of this S7 or TDM boards, uh, like um, Telscale has its own TDM board, uh, S7 board, or uh, the user is also free to use the hardy based boards, which are Vigium or Angoma, or we even support the dialogic board. The configuration is such that, uh, the flexibility is such that you just change a little bit of configuration, no change whatsoever is required at the top layer, and uh, boom, it starts working with uh, uh, self-skill as a servant board, or Digium, or Sangoma, or, or dialogic board. So, the self-skill USSD gateway exposes the request uh, and, and the responses from the third party application via HTTP. It can also uh, be controlled via CLI, command line interface, or it provides a very Java web console, uh, the UI console for the admin to create uh, um, the short codes or to, to define the routing rules uh, where the short, where the uh, USSD request should land up in, in, in the IP world. Any queries on, on architecture? Anyone have any questions? Yeah, just so you're aware, Amit, I, Ivelin has come up on uh, on ZipDX, so if you if you run into uh, audio problems, he can dive in and uh, and take the stand. In fact, it might be interesting to hear what he sounds like if he's coming from China. Ivelin, can you hear me? You can type star six to unmute, and let's see if we can hear him. Hello? Yes. Can you guys hear me? 
<laughs> yes, it's amazing, but yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so I can't uh, connect to Google Hangouts. It hasn't gotten as far as China yet, or maybe it has, but uh, the great firewall doesn't want to acknowledge that. Okay, so you're there if uh, we need you. Um, let's go back with uh, with Amit and see if we can continue. If no one has any questions, otherwise. Okay. Shall I move to the next okay. slide? So, uh, yes, it's ready. Thank you. I don't want to rush. I just want to be in sync. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, we're still architecture, though. So it's architecture part two. Yeah, uh, it's just about uh, uh, it exposes the HTTP API. Uh, obviously, HTTP is not tied to any uh, uh, platform or technology, so the end application can be on uh, uh, Apache Tomcat or JBoss or BA Weblog, uh, Oracle Weblogic or IBM WebSphere, doesn't matter. Uh, it can be a PHP or uh, IIS, uh, you can use ASP. Or you can even write a simple C programming language, uh, use the C programming language, and uh, create your own business logic. So just, just to uh, highlight the, the advantages of using HTTP and, and why we decided HTTP. Though there is uh, uh, some disadvantages, uh, which is like there is no standard protocol defined. Uh, there are vendors who have uh, USSD gateway, and each one of them uh, decided to expose the, the, the USSD to, to the application in their proprietary way. This is one part which is not standardized, unlike SMFP, where uh, SMPP is the protocol, a standard protocol that every vendor has to implement. Okay, so uh, we go to the next slide, which is still continuation of architecture. Thanks, Wendy. So, in this slide, uh, it shows about the flow, uh, uh, the question that Wendy asked uh, at the start of the presentation, like uh, where does the request come from to application and how does the response come back? So this uh, picture gives you some idea about the flow of uh, the request. Um, as soon as the end user dials the shock code, like say start one, two, three, Hash, uh, it lands up on the HLRs of the operator. Uh, it is uh, uh, the provider, network provider of the end user. And the HLR is configured with the uh, global title. Uh, it's a bit of uh, details on SS7 protocol. Uh, basically, the global title is more like uh, in IP world, you can say like IP address. Uh, so once the request uh, which is HLR. Uh, HLR knows uh, where to forward this request when it comes to the USSD gateway. The USSD gateway is uh, uh, smart enough to convert the lower layer uh, MAP protocol, the, the, the lowest layer S7 protocol into HTTP. And um, it sends back this request to the third party application. So the application uh, will receive this USSD request and do some business logic, send back the response to end user, which could be like a three-based menu uh, where the application is expecting some response back from the end user, and end user can dial the response, which is generally like uh, option one for this, two for that, and three to reserve your tickets. So user dials that response and it comes back to application, and application can send back the, the final response or continue the three based menu. So does that answer your initial query, Wendy, about uh, the, the overall flow of uh, USSD? Yeah, that kind of that kind of covers it. And I'm I'm trying to follow so that uh, uh, I've zoomed in a little bit on the slide, and I think I kind of uh, was in sync. So any questions while we're while we're interrupted here? We want to, questions or comments? from the esteemed audience. Okay, I guess we can continue. I've got a question. Ah, please. Uh, 
I was just going to ask sort of a, a more general general one because um, there was a, a slide earlier about uses of USSD. I was just wondering what, what the most creative use of USSD that Amit's ever seen is. The most creative use of USSD. Creative is what's, a good, yeah, good what, describing creative word. Is in, uh, what's the most out there, brilliant idea, innovative thing he's heard of that anybody's done with USSD? Well, indeed, actually, the uh, question. Sorry, the, I the, I'm sorry, the question could be asked besides the menu of ordering new internet services on your phone or getting status messages, what else has I been mean, done of interest there? I mean, those are all the those are the kinds of things that people have all done before. But is sure. there anything somebody's done that's just different? Like, are there call girl services where you can, you know, dial one for blondes or <laughs> any, anything exciting like that? Oh dear! Are uh, you talking to Mars or something here? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> a long delay. A lot of thinking going on. Yes, that hear me? Yes. This Helen. Um, there are actually um, quite a few of interesting things showing up. That uh, some of them uh, can be categorized with uh, roaming problems, data roaming, that is, um, because. As Summit mentioned earlier, USSD, even in roaming mode, is still free of charge. So some operators are offering things like um, emergency email notifications for people that are traveling to USSD push that otherwise they wouldn't be able to, to receive if they don't have a data roaming in whatever country. Uh, that's one example, um, and then the, and then there are other um, examples of, of things that allow them to manage their accounts, like top up their accounts from um, whatever uh, whatever country they're roaming in from. For example, if they're out traveling and their account runs low and now they're disconnected, so what do they do about getting that phone back working? So we Yes, they can too. But, uh, but yeah, you can argue that could have been a service that's been around for a long time. But uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, it's uh, having a resurgence for it. This is we're seeing it more often implemented now than uh, I've ever seen before. I should probably say here that there's a very good comment uh, when I asked about the uses in uh, in IRC. Plix says, for marijuana, press the hash key, which I think is an excellent application of USSG. Back to uh, <laughs> Amit's presentation, or Ivlin, uh, who's going to take the ball and where should I be on the slides? Okay. Um, okay. And Thomas is here yep. too, someplace. I don't know where, but uh, Thomas Quintana is here. Whole company's here. True Phone and <laughs> Telestacks. Everybody's here. Yep. And, and almost all of Simwood too. And almost all of Simwood. Well, Simwood is a vast organization, James. I wouldn't exaggerate. <laughs> almost all of Simwood. Okay. And a lot of phonefromhere.com, too. And quite a bit of the VUC personnel. <laughs> I'm hearing a vast, like, seashell kind of sound, though, right now. <laughs> phonefromhere.com barely exists anymore. I <laughs> know. You still have the domain, though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or do you? Okay. Yeah, no, I still do. Uh, only because I bought it for three years at one point. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm lost. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> Emmett, Emmett, I can see you here, so you must be dialed in as well. Yeah, I'm still using the PSN line. Uh, oh, okay. I'm not on my ISP anymore. Okay, this, this slide is very hard to read. I, I tried to zoom in on it and everything, but if we're ready to move on, just let me know. Hint, hint. Sure. Uh, do you want me to share my screen and try it? I think we just move on. We, uh, whatever, either way, either way. Let's just keep keep it moving. 
Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, let's go to the next slide, which is uh, a little bit about uh, high availability and uh, load balancing of the USSD. Okay, we're there. So um, as as the slide suggests, uh, you can de deploy the cell scale USSD in uh, load balance mode. Uh, the load balancing is the inherent nature of FS7 spec. Uh, so you do the SS7 itself gives you the flexibility for uh, load balancing, which is based on uh, uh, SLS, uh, uh, which is signaling link selection, or you can also do the load balancing based on uh, the dialog. Um, in this diagram, uh, we have extended the architecture of this, and uh, we, we we have shown that probably uh, any operator, uh, mid-size operator, uh, will have multiple SLRs, and uh, the SLRs can be configured that uh, the USSD request from uh, uh, SNOP ABC, which is more of like a range of the MSI and CN, uh, goes to Telcel USSD gateway 1 and 2, and the range MSI and CN range uh, uh, D, E, F, uh, could be any any particular range goes to uh, central USSD gateway node 3 and uh, 4. Um, and uh, the USSD gateway pushes the USSD request uh, over internet to the application server. So even the application server can be a cluster. Um, and there can be a HTTP load balancer in, in uh, between the application server and central USSD gateway. So this way, uh, you can provide uh, uh, 100% load balancing and high availability such that even if there is some failure at the, at the server network or there is some failure at the application server or IP, uh, still the users can uh, uh, access all the services uh, uh, deployed in, uh, on the application server side. Um, from my experience, uh, most of the users are pretty confused about uh, how the load balancing has achieved uh, on, on the seven world. Uh, so if you guys have any query on this, uh, now is the time. OK. Looks like so, no questions. OK. I think I'm doing pretty good. or. Uh, I managed to confuse everybody. <laughs> no, I think you're yeah. doing well. You're doing fine, Amit. Just keep keep moving. Great stuff. Okay. Uh, that, that's pretty much. Uh, and the last, we have reached the last slide, which is uh, if you want to know more about self scale US of the gateway, uh, you can go to telespecs.com uh, slash products. And uh, the easiest way to reach me or any other team member in the respect is you can drop a line to Publishing's public group. And uh, speakers are always available on uh, the forum. Uh, most of us are hanging out on the forum like uh, seven days a week. So feel free to contact us by, by reaching out at, at the forum. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about the scale use of the gateway. Okay, and for people who are listening to this, because a lot of people listen to audio, um, so in the recording and so on, we're talking about telestacks.com slash products. I'm going to spell that T-E-L-E-S-T-A-X dot com slash products. If you don't know how to spell products, you probably shouldn't contact them. Um, okay, this is good. Emmett, thank you, and thanks to everybody who helped us out. Uh, I just, there we go. I just put you on camera. You're not in sync, probably, because your audio is coming through. Sorry for all the troubles. This happens. It's not a thing that only has happened to you. We've had this several times. This is uh, the high-tech stuff, and we're all on different limited. I may even be off now. I'm not sure if I'm in connected now. Yeah, I see James moving. Okay. Because I've been disconnected from, well, I've been disconnected from the net four times today, this afternoon already, just where the router rebooted automatically, and uh, I was gone. So, glad it didn't happen now, but uh, thanks to everybody. I'm going to end the Hangout because we've been kind of going on, but we will are ending the broadcast. Thanks to uh, 
Simon, we're still going to be continuing to talk, though, so everybody stay on. Unless, let me call for comments, though, on at USSD before we do close it up. Because uh, we've got uh, James and Ed Guy and Tim and everybody. Uh, anybody no have Carl a, Fife? No Carl Fife yet, but he may be with us. But does anybody on the Hangout want to do anything before we close that out? James, come on. The closing yeah, statement. Um, USSD got a bit of a bad press recently. Um, in uh, in context of um, people sending malicious USSD codes to Android handsets. Oh crikey! What's going on? Yeah, here? I know this. This is this is the, the session from hell. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we have really good ones, and sometimes where's all that noise coming from? That's not me this time. Somebody's pressed the the we finished button. Not yet. Now we're still on air. No, but but it ran through the sponsors slides and stuff. No, no, no. That was just a an accidental thing. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, all of a sudden there's this uh, rather interesting little um, uh, spate of applications, all supposed to protect your Android handset against malicious USSD messages that. Uh, then do a factory reset on your Android handsets. It has to be pointed out that this only uh, is a threat with uh, older version Android handsets because uh, uh, Google have kind of sorted out that little issue. Um, but there we are. Throw away a bit of random noise in the uh, in the. Uh... So I I have a question, which is: it, Are there any carriers that offer APIs to the USSD? For developers to access. Yes, yes, there are. Who? Do you want me to tell you? Do you, do you want me to tell you on air? Well, I don't want to plug other other operator services. Uh, okay, so so it is a service that some operators offer. Like yeah, and they tend to be the smaller operators who tend to work in places where there aren't very many uh, native subscribers. So they make their money by selling. Uh, innovative services um, to people who are outside of their little island. Okay, yes, always good to have an island. Yeah. So, so I'm not going to give you names, but you can identify the... Yeah, no, I, I got the hint already from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the odd operator or two who tend to have one cell uh, on 3G with a range of about three feet, uh, but then operate things like USSD supplementary... Services and we say sell to people. Blah, blah, blah. You're 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 turning into a big carrier, James. <laughs> really, I'm boring. Well, yeah, we're, yeah, and uh, it's sounding to... like one anyway. You want to be careful there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are quite big now. I'm. I'm... Well, there are three of us here, so we must be big. <laughs> and one hiding in the uh, wings. Yeah. So and uh, another thing is that some um, some carriers, I think we mentioned it, are, are blocking certain types of traffic, particularly in places like Asia. Amit, are you in Asia, by the way? Are you in India? Yes, uh, I'm based out of India. Big traveling most of the time. So. Yeah, so what's the situation in India with USSD uh, blocking? Uh, are any carriers in, in India doing nasty things to USSD? Uh, no, not really. Uh, James, uh, from my experience, uh, it's still a uh, very uh, uh, open market, uh, uh, even in India or Africa, even in uh, I travel to most of the operators in Africa, and uh, some of them really block USSD. Uh, it's pretty much open, but slowly they, they are realizing the threat, and uh, uh, there are quite a few operators who are proactively to be taking the steps to bring in uh, third party who can uh, help them filter the content, uh, filter out the request based on the content and uh, the origination point. Uh, they are also doing this kind of filtering on SMS. Uh, the SMS is pretty old, but USSD is still pretty new, so not much of the work is done on USSD side yet. Yeah, I'm aware of at least two European operators who do deep packet inspection and block certain types of traffic, um, including rogue USSD stuff. So, 
yeah it, it works in most places so it's a really really useful tool but it's um, it's not universally a, a available there are certain scenarios where it doesn't work but we certainly use it don't we Ed and what do you use it for uh, well certain diagnostic things uh, credit balance is another one uh, on prepay um, it be universal that yeah well that's what it's designed to be uh, used for mm -hmm. what else do we and, use uh, uh, it used for setting up third-party call control or callbacks in uh, certain countries where we don't have uh, Camel available. We do. Is that is that? I don't want to say legal because I'm sure you wouldn't be illegal. But is that um, a regular? I mean, that everybody that's over the board. Well, it tends not to be used widely because um, it's just a bit fiddly for the user to do. So yeah. whilst you can do it, I mean, how many users can remember uh, a star hash, something star. coming hash, USD, USSD prefix followed by an E164 number? Because their if brains you, start exploding when they try to remember that. Yeah. If, you go, if you go back 10 years, though, or 10 or 12 years before Camel was widely available at all, that was the only way to do it with prepay phones. We used was, to have yeah. that. There used to be a callback numbers for the states. I mean, all expatriates will, expatriates will know that there used to be people uh, selling these things where you would you so you would dial a number, and then it would call you. I think you had to dial a U.S. number, by the way, if I'm not mistaken. And you ha then yeah, it so called you back. I I can't even remember what the number was, but it called you back using uh, the ANI, I believe. It's been so long. It's been yeah, so. so long. In, okay. in that scenario, you hey. would call an actual. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, we got, we got, we got, we've got a, a guest here. This is Tim Evans, uh, aka Tim the Sim, who knows all about uh, USSD, and he just wants to say a few words. Hey, Tim, welcome. Oh, well, I have to drop my one o'clock is here, so I'm going to talk to you guys later. Come on back. Great call. Love, to, love to hear more from you. <laughs> I you will. I'll be around. Bye now. Okay. Bye. So I quickly overheard the conversation you had about um, USSD strings for dial strings and stuff. The the actual results we had in Vodafone where we had the difference between camel countries where you just dialed straight and non-camel countries where you had to go star, one, two, three, star, telephone number, hash, was somewhere between a hundredth and a fiftieth of the volume of traffic. Okay, so pretty well nobody would use it because it's horrible when we put it on the sim menu so that it did it automatically we got fairly broadly equal levels again however there are there are some difficulties with doing that as well so that's that was just some real figures that we'd had that i knew interesting yeah people don't quickly want... quickly tell us who you are tim Oh yeah, well I'll, I'll tell you who that, that this is Tim Evans, aka Tim the Sim. Who? What are you? In fact, you tell people what who, what you do. So I'm head of devices. Uh, my my um, my past is I was a handset designer at Philips, doing uh, police, fire, ambulance, taxis, so PMR, tax, mobile, all that sort of uh, paging. I then moved to NEC to do their GSM phones when GSM was a young young pup. Then I worked for Vodafone for 13 years as Mr. Sim, and as part of that became vice chair of the standards, and three years ago moved to Trufo and fixed the Sim and did lots of other Sim-related stuff. And now I'm responsible for handsets, numbers, uh, Sim cards, of course, and uh, number portability. Well, seeing as the, num the number of uh, Trufone participants, I think we need to do another Trufone session one of these days in July or August, maybe August. Oh, yeah. What do you say? Oh, plus, James didn't hear what I just said. No, no, I've got my headset back on. Thank anyway, he, Tim is too, too, too modest. What Tim doesn't know about SIM cards, you can write on the back of a nano SIM. He writes the specs, and he, in, in amongst all that kind of uh, long preamble, he said, "Well, I just did 13 years running SIMs at Vodafone only. Oh, that's Vodafone Group." But anyway, that's that's Tim. Okay, thank you, Tim, and uh, let's do a let's do a thing with you guys, James. You um, I'll look for you to uh, organize that. But before we talk about that, let me kill the broadcast. Thank you, everybody. VUC.me is the site. Uh, go to VUC.me/g, the letter G, and you'll see the excellent 450 plus expert 
Google Plus community where you'll see all of the people in this call plus 447 other people, I guess. And we will see you next week. Next week is Pika Tech, Pika Technologies, VoIP, um, gosh, VoIP Firewall, I think it is, and Platform. Anyway, thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week, and I'll start a new hangout in a few minutes. <laughs>